demons in disguise. And in all that I have said to you, take heed, and make no mention of the name of other mighty ones. Let it not be heard from your mouth. Shavuot 23 verse 13. And you shall be very courageous to guard and to do all that is written in the book of the Torah of Masha, so as not to turn aside from it right or left, so as not to go in among these nations, those who remain among you, and make no mention of the name of their mighty ones, nor swear by them, nor serve them, nor bow down to them. Yahushua. Joshua 23, verse 6 to 7, Barak Yehuah. Shalom, shalom, beloved family, and to all the goyim that have attached themselves unto us through the adoption of the blood of Yahusha HaMashiach, Barak Yehuah, and even to all unbelievers that desire to please the Mosai, to serve the Mosai, shalom, shalom to you as well, Barak Yehuah. This is your beloved Watchman Azariah, who Rumamu Yahuwah, coming to you with another exposure of demons that are in disguise under certain names, Barak Yahuwah. Now, with some of these words, man, I'm telling you, we use some of these words a lot in our everyday speaking. So I know it's going to be a bit of a challenge, but, you know, we welcome the challenge, you know, because we want to be perfect in Yahuwah's eyes. We want to be striving towards our perfection we want to be pure we want to be righteous so we got to purge these things out so all this thing for, to abba yahuwah for exposing these mighty ones you know barak yahuwah i give esteem and thanks to yahuwah even through you know our beloved ahuti bata yahu for doing these diggings putting these words together barak yahuwah man all this thing to abba yahuwah for the assistance and for what he has done for what he is doing and for what he is about to do. Barak Yahuwah. Now let's jump right into it. First on your screen, you might not use this a lot. For some persons, you might. Some persons, you might not. But, you know, I'm just still sharing it anyways. I don't really use this. Probably if I was in school or if, it were, if I was in history, doing some history lessons, teaching something, then I would use this word. But just going to share it anyways so you can stay clear of it. Now, this one, as you can see on the screen, it is A.T. Lamad A.S. Now, it says that A.T. Lamad A.S. was a titan mighty one who bore the sky aloft. He personified the quality of um, endurance. He was a leader of the titans. You have heard about the titans in Greek mythology? He was a leader in the titans. And... In their war against Z-E-U-S. Z-E-U-S, we already know who that is. They say that's the mighty one of mighty ones. So he's like the top one in Greek mythology. So he led the Titans in their war against the Z-Demon. Now, after their defeat, yes, they lost. He was condemned to carry the heavens upon his shoulders. According to others, he was instead, or later, appointed guardian of the pillars which pulled the earth and the sky asunder. Now, even in their Greek mythology, they tell you that there are pillars underneath the earth. But yet, they're the same ones telling you that the earth is a ball. Even in their mythology, they're telling you that the earth is not a ball. Look at that. Hmm. And if you read Revelation chapter 7, when Yahuwah is giving the seal to the 144,000, how much messengers were here on earth that he spoke to? It says that the messenger that ascended, that descended from heaven, came and spoke to the four messengers standing at the four corners of the earth where the pillars were support. So now they're trying to say this demon is the one in charge of those pillars. Yeah, right. <laughs> Barak Yahuwah. Ruma Mu Yahuwah. So for those who use this word, get it out of your vocabulary. Um, they said that this means, this word means book in their term, their way. Said this word means book, 
for some of us, we know it as being a map. So you can just simply say map instead of saying this word, this mighty one. Allah, we are. Moving on to the next word. It's not a mighty one name, but, you know, we got to show curses as well. Now, this word, B-A-D, bad. Bad is not the name for mighty one, but it means something that we don't really understand. We They gave us this meaning, but it's not. This is the meaning. This is not the original meaning or the true meaning. They also had the word nice. For those who watched that video that I did regarding nice, where they made it sound as if nice meant something positive, when nice meant something negative. Nice means you're foolish, you're unknowing, you're ignorant, you're dumb. It's the same thing with bad. As you can see in the um, 13th centuries, it be, well, they say it means inadequate, unsatisfactory, worthless, you know, unfortunate, wicked, evil, vicious, counterfeit. No, persons were named in this way, William Bad or Petrie Bad. No, rare before the 1400, and evil was more common. So evil, the word evil was more commonly used instead of bad. It was until the 1700 as the ordinary um, antius of, they say G-O-O-D, but we know that it's not a name of a mighty one as well. So it's right or pure. It has no appearing relatives in other languages. It is possible from Old English derogatory the term this is how they would have it in the old English. It would be like, like this A looking E joint letter. Man, I'm telling you, English, old English, like the original English, is truly messed up. I mean, you guys think you have seen nonsense yet? <laughs> if you should go and dig up the old century English and look at it and try to read it or listen to it, man, that's that's complete nonsense. And but yet still you have persons here, especially in religion, that defend this language and don't even know the origin of this language. They defend this language. Oh, well, I choose to use his English name because we're English speaking people. You don't even know the origin of this language. Oh, messed up it is. Oh, wicked it sounds. It sounds like witchcraft. It sounds like someone chanting in a Latin. It sounds like someone chanting a spell in Latin. That's what it sounds like. And yet you defend it. And you don't know nothing about English. Only what they told you. Only what they want you to know. Man, it's crazy. So anyways, this was how it looked in old days English. And as you can see, it's different from how we see it today. And it's diminutive. This is another way of saying it. It means... Infeminate man, or it means a uh, her m a p h r r o d i t. The reason why I don't say this part right here, the p h r o d i t is the name of a mighty one. So when they said bad back then, it meant an infeminate man, you know, like a sodomite. A man that acted like a woman. It also related to the word, this word in the old English. I don't know if this is an A and E, but let's just say this is an A and E. B A E or B A D A N, which means to defile. So to the to D, they have it as mean the opposite of right, which would be wrong or evil. But in reality, this back then it meant an infeminate man. A sodomite. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's a sodomite. That's what you're really saying. Just like the word nice. Oh, you look nice today. Oh, you look dumb today. You look foolish. Stupid today. Ignorant today. That's what nice really means. So wanted to share this as well so you can, you know, just get this out of your vocabulary and try to use something else. If you choose to. If you choose to. Choice is yours. If you don't want to then that's your fault because not a lot of persons will accept these things. Why? Because wickedness or being lazy or you're both wicked and lazy. So for those who will, here you go. Moving on to the next one. 
you know, this one, uh, quite a few persons use this a lot, even especially I'm, I'm talking about those in the truth in this walk. C H A O S. In the Greek, this would be, as you can see, under Greek name right here. This is how it looks in the Greek language. This is their Greek lettering. And the transliteration of this, because you can't recognize this, even though it looks like an X, an A, an O, a C, you still can't really recognize it. You get what I'm saying? You still can't really spell it. This looks like an E, and this is like a C, but it's kind of different. So they transliterated here. It's like if you had Japanese right here or Chinese, you wouldn't be able to recognize it. So you would have to transliterate it into another language, which we have right here. So this is how it will be spelled with an K, K H A O S or K H A E O S. Then in the Latin, the Latin spelling would be C H A O S, which we have today, C H A O S. Now, their translation, it means, they said it means gap or chasm, a space, space, right? It means space, space, what kind of space? Outer space? No. Let me show you what they mean. Now, dash was the first of the primordial um, or original old days, back in the days, mighty ones, to emerge at dawn of creation. She was followed, she, notice they say she, she was followed in quick succession by G-A-I-A. -A. No, G-A-Y, this is where we get the word G-A-Y from. So that's why I say, said Sodomite and not G-A-Y. G-A-Y is from G-A-I-A, -A, this mighty one right here. You can spell it with an I, you can spell it with an E. So she's a mighty one, she's a demoness. Also, this word right, right here, we see this in Greek mythology, like Greek um, movies, um, T-A-R-T-A-R-O-S, which they claim to mean the pit below, but it's a mighty one. And then you got this other mighty one, E-R-O-S, which, which they mean he is in control of per procreation. So the G-A-I-A -A is Earth, and then the T-A-R-T-A-R-O-S is the mighty one in control of the pit. And then the E one, where the mouse is at, is the mighty one that's in control of procreation. Now, K, the K-Demon was the lower atmosphere which surrounds the Earth. Both the invisible air and the gloom of fog and mist the word dash means gap or chasm, being the space between heaven and earth. The space between heaven and earth. So in some translations, you will see where it says the firmament or the shamayim, rather, not the firmament, the shamayim. Some persons will put it as skies. Some persons will put it as space. I think only a few persons that I've ever seen translated that way. I think um, Lou White is one that I can remember that translated that way, which means space, the space between um, the heaven and the earth. Because that's what it is. That's, that's the space between heaven and earth, the waters above. That's what the skies is, a space. So when they read says space, it's not really outer space, but inner space. So if you should say this, you know, all right, I'm going going up into inner space and they're like what everyone's used to outer space meaning outside the earth so if you should say all right i'm gonna take a flight and go into inner space they will be confused well those who know like the elites would know what you're talking about and then they would know that you know but the others the majority the mas the masses would not know what you mean by inner space because they have never heard it before now the translation for shamayim opening above the waters opening above waters another translation for shamayim is open above the waters because that's what uh, that's what is above the rakia the firmament the shield the glass dome there are waters above that's what yahuwah said he separated the waters from below 
with the waters from above. He separated him. He put some of the waters above and some below. Go and read Genesis for yourself. If you want history, go read the Bible. It's that simple. You don't need to go to any school or go to any library to learn about history. Your history is right there in the Bible. The history of the earth and everything is right there in the Bible, in the scriptures, in Yah's words. But we have man today telling us what the history is. First, we heard it was a Big Bang theory. Now they're saying it's the G.O.D. particles. Then we have the evolution, the evolution of you know mankind and all the stuff we evolved from um, matters to a certain kind of creature, to a next creature, then to an ape, then from an ape to a man. So then you'd ask the question, why is it that apes stop evolving? So you choose to believe which one you want. So for those who believe the ball earth, you're believing what Hashatan tells you. You're not believing what Yahuwah tells you in, the, in his words, in his scriptures. And why I'm saying this is because we got persons in the truth that believe the earth is a ball. I don't know how, I don't know why persons in the truth, especially, still choose to hold on to that lie. It's my, it might as well be hold on to the, the lie that his name is Lord and G-O-D and his name is J-C because how can you accept one truth and not all truth? I want all truth. I don't want partial truth or one truth. I don't, I don't want the, his name. I want everything. So you still got persons in the truth that still believes the shape of the earth is a ball. And that we're in outer space and we are moving around the moon and the, 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 the sun is, uh, oh, we are rotating or whatever they want to use term around the, 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 the sun and we are light years away and all that nonsense. I mean, come on. Where is that in the scriptures for those in the truth? Where do you see that in the scriptures? So you're telling me that the sun was created before the earth when the scriptures what you should be believing in tells you that the sun was created after the earth. It's crazy. Anyways, wanted to show you guys this so you can refrain from saying this word. Um, another word that you can say for this is disorder. Disorder. The word shalom, the meaning, the true meaning, the strong meaning for the word shalom is to destroy the authority connected to disorder. So you can simply say this order instead of saying this word right here. Allah Moving on to another one that we use a lot. And it's a struggle to get this one out, but I'm learning it. I'm getting it now. Barakahua. C Lamad O T H. Most of us we use this as C Lamad O T H E S. Yes, that word is derived from the name of a demon, a mighty one. So here you can see her, and here she got something in her hand. This is a tread. This is um tread. This is um a tread, a weave of tread. Why? Because she was one of the three feats, or this is their their Greek term or title in Greek mythology. Her sisters were this and this. So she was the one who spun the thread of the lives of all mortals. So if you go look her up, you'll see different depiction of her holding a thread in her hand. So she is the one who did the treading for life in their terms, in their meaning. So this right, right here, it means spinning or spinner. Because that's what she did. She spin or spun. The tread of life. So this is where we got this English word from. C Lamad O T H E S. So the best word that we can use today is what we see in the scriptures. Garments. You can simply say garments. There's another word, but I can't remember it right now. I remember it earlier. Uh, I can't remember it right now. Apparel, I believe. Khan, apparel. Apparel or garments, those two words are safe and okay to use. So instead of saying this, you can simply say apparel or garment. All right, so apparel or garments are safer words to be used. And final one, this one is a two part, two in one, as they would say, two in one special, two for one special. Now, this final one. 
is H A R M O N I A. Most of us know this word as right here H A R M O N Y. Now, in Greek, this is how the name looks in Greek. And the transliteration of this is this H A R M O I M O N I. In the Roman, in the Roman language, this is how they spell it. C O N C O R D I A. And the translation, they said it means this and this. Now, Dash, the H demoness, she was the demoness of Dash and Dash. She was a daughter of A R E S and a daughter of, here you have it, P H R O D I T. And as presided over both. Uh, Mar material or martial rather dash sodden strife and discord now these two words here you have it these two words especially this one we use this one a lot you might be wondering what i'm talking about strong's con dash strong's con dash that's what we use a lot. So when I refer a Hebrew word, I'll say, all right, let's dive into the Strong's Con Dash, right? The Strong's. So instead of saying Strong's Con Dash, you just simply say Strong's. Let's head over to the Strong's and see what the Hebrew word is for this English word. So you can simply just cut out the C-O-N part. Just simply say Strong. Once you say Strong's, we all know what you're talking about. If I should say Strong's like what well, I'm saying it right now, everyone, well, not everyone, but majority who know would know what I'm talking about. And for those who don't know, then I'll simply show it because I always show these things on the screen so you have an idea. So this one is a two-in-one, as you can see. She has one name in Greek as this and one name in Roman as in this. So you got to stay away from these two words, which are names of mighty one, Barak Yahuwah Yahusha, Allah we are. So, we already know Yahuwah commands us to not say them. And as I said, you know, some people take this very lightly. And it's because you don't really realize or understand the, the effects of saying their names. If you watch horror movies, if you remember watching horror movies back in the day, especially the older days horror movies, not like today's horror movies. But the older days are movies. There were these different movies. There you had the Sandman, you had the Boogeyman. They said if you said the Boogeyman name three times, he would appear. He would come from under your bed or whatever. And in the movie, whenever they do it, he always does appear. Now, if you keep on calling on these mighty ones' name, what do you think is going to happen? They are going to appear, and then you're going to feel this heaviness or this this force in the atmosphere and you're wondering why you feel this way all of a sudden no you're going to be um irritated you're going to be angry you're going to be frustrated you're going to be you know everything negative and you're wondering what's going on why do i feel this way this is why you feel that way because when you call on these demons they show up and they have rules they have um responsibilities or assignments that they have to take care of one might be to lead you to jealousy, to lead you to wrath, to lead you to strife, to cause disorder, mischief in your life. That's their responsibility. It's everything negative. So when you keep on calling on their name, they will show up. That's no if, but, nor maybe. I know this from first-hand experience. But, and then why would Yahuwah tell us not to in several places? Why would he tell us not to say their names? Why do you take it so simple? Why do we try to add and take away from Yah's word? Just leave it as it is. Just be obedient. Because the problem is today, majority in this world are too comfortable. They want Yahuwah to change. They don't want to change. They want Yah to change. You try to show someone the truth or correct someone, they try to give you a... Uh, bunch of excuses or explanation is simply instead of simply just you know accepting where they went wrong or accepting that you know this word is messed up i gotta change i need to change we are too comfortable we got too comfortable too complacent with life the flesh does not like change 
but you cannot allow your flesh to rule you. You got to allow the rule of Yahuwah to lead you, not your flesh. For the flesh war it against the spirit. And the fruit of the flesh are everything negative, but the fruit of the spirit are everything positive. So if you truly want to please Yahuwah, who are you going to please? Are you going to please your friends and families that you don't want to look strange and weird before? You don't want to seem crazy before? Because that's another thing why people don't want to change. People are trying to fit in. You're trying to fit in with the rest of the world. The same way our ancestors wanted to fit in. Remember, when during the days of um, Samuel or Samuel, what did they say to Samuel? They said, Samuel, we want a king that we can see. We want to be like those nations around us. Even though they had a king, they had a king who was the king, Yahuwah. They didn't really saw Yahuwah face to face, but they saw his power, his greatness, his kabod, his honor, his esteem. He delivered them. He fight for them. He provided for them. But that still was not enough. It was not enough. So they said they wanted to be like the other nations because they were deceived into thinking the other nations had it better than us. They didn't. They don't. Even up until this day, they still don't. So don't try to fit in. Don't try to join the majority because the scripture says, much are called, few are chosen. Broad is the road that leads to destruction and there is a lot that is on that road. Straight and narrow is the road that leads to eternal life and few find it or few are on it. So do you want to be a part of the majority or do you want to be a part of the few, the chosen? If you want to be a part of the few, the chosen, then you need to be Kadash, which means to be separated. You need to live a Kadash, separated life. Not trying to please your friends or your families are being worried or concerned about being called names, crazy, or demons, or whatever they want to call us. I've been called several different names. Demon, a demon, a this, a that, crazy, mad, insane. I'm still here. I'll be crazy. I'll be mad. I'll be insane. Call me whatever you want to call me. I'll continue to be that way because I know the truth. And I know that at the end of all of this, we will all see who's crazy, who's mad, who's insane. Look at it, everyone. In the book of Matthew, they call Yahusha names. And it wasn't no positive names that I talked about. I'm talking about negative names. Calling him Baalzebub, master of, 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 of flies or demons. His own family thought he was crazy. Well, his earthly family thought he was crazy. They mocked, they jeered, they laughed. Go back to, to, to Matthew 27 and Matthew 28 and see how they dealt with him, how the soldiers dealt with him. And they blindfolded him and whipped him and all that stuff and said, prophesy, prophesy. Tell us who whipped you. Oh, mighty one. Oh, living a lower. Oh, son of, a, son of Yahuwah. Tell us, prophesy. And they laughed and they mocked and they jeered. And they did it until... When he gave the power, he commanded the power to leave his body. When he said, Ali, Ali, Lama Hasbatani, he said, My power, my power, you leave, you go. And then the whole place shook. What did they say after? All the laughing stopped. And they said, Whoa, he really was who he said he was. All the laughing stopped. All the mocking jeering stopped. So, if you're living and walking in this truth, walking in Yahuwah, you need to do so and not be focused on what people are going to say about you. They did it to Yahusha. Yahusha says, if they did me this way, how much more shall they do those of his own household? Which means they are going to do us the same and even worse. If that's something that you can handle, or you don't want to go through, then the truth is not for you. This walk, this lifestyle is not for you. Barak Yahuwah. So, wanted to share this with you guys. Yes, you look crazy. You look stupid in front of your friends when you don't say these regular words. 
because they're saying it and then you don't say that you're gonna like why don't you want to say that word oh you're, you're stupid that's you're you're being too deep you're getting too deep into this and all that nonsense let them laugh let them mock let them jeer you know the truth at the end of the day no one can choose for you Barak Yahuwah, Yahusha, Ruma, Mu Yahuwah. All is seen to be Yahuwah. Allah, everyone has a beautiful, beautiful day and week. Ruma, Mu Yahuwah. Continue to strive to push for Yahuwah, Yahusha. And know that Yah is your deliverer. Yah is your provider. Yah is your shield and buckler. Ruma, Mu Yahuwah. When there seems to be no way, He has already made a way, beloved family. Don't give up. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what they try to do to control you, to put fear on you, do not give up. The fear is increasing because they're entering their transition phase where they want to change over power. They want to give over the power from the United States to some other country. So there's a lot of fear being spread right now. You can hear of COVID all of a sudden being on the rise again in over 12 or 15 countries. They're bringing back fear. Do not allow fear to dictate your life or to lead you, everyone. Be bold and brave in Yahuwah. Even if that means you have to die, then so be it. Halal, Yah, Ruma, Mo, Yahuwah. That's the only way you can be prepared. And that's the only way you can make it if it's you endure to the end. You fight a wonderful fight the same way our beloved, the Apostle Sha'al, Apostle Paul did. So that we can receive that same crown of righteousness. Ruma, mu, Yahuwah. Allah, yah. So I ask Yahuwah even now to Barakata, u, shamar, ata. Hallelujah. Ruma, mu, Yahuwah. Emails will be always be in the description. So whatever you want to reach out or you want to ask any questions, feel free. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Don't be nervous. Ruma, mu, Yahuwah. We won't bite. Barak, Yahuwah. So enjoy the rest of your you and your week. Allah, yeah. Much ahab to every single one. We appreciate the support always. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, beloved ones. Barak Yahuwah.